Altogether, there are a total of 189 weapons included in Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition for Nintendo Switch. This video will consist of four parts, divided between the level 1, 2, 3 slash 4, and the 8-bit slash level 4 plus weapons. In each part, I will tackle all of the weapons' unique or not-so-unique origins in the Zelda series. I'm also going to include time codes that will let you easily navigate between the four parts down in the description. Let's kick things off by examining all of the level 1 weapons, including the Master Sword in this first part. Link's Night Sword is a Hyrule Warriors original design, however it is built around matching the Hylian Knight's uniform that he's seen wearing at the beginning of the game. The Fire Rod scene here is also very original, however it is built to match the A Link to the Past Fire Rod. The Great Fountain Fairy scene here is built off the Ocarina of Time Great Fairy design. Next up we have the Silver Gauntlets, which do come from Ocarina of Time, however the ball and the chain at the end are lifted directly from the Twilight Princess item. The Hyrule Warriors version of the Master Sword is paired with the Hylian Shield, both of which best resemble their Skyward Sword counterparts. Link's level 1 Epona is a Hyrule Warriors original version of Epona, and it even has some details like the blue cloth that it's wearing matching the scarf that the Hyrule Warriors Link wears. The ancient spinner here is the exact same spinner from Twilight Princess. Moving on to Impa, her level 1 giant blade is the Giant's Knife, which is named for the sword that Metagoron makes in Ocarina of Time, which can break after using a certain number of times. Next we have Impa's Naginata weapons, which probably have the least basis for being in Hyrule Warriors, and unsurprisingly, the Guardian Naginata is a Hyrule Warriors original design. Next up is Sheik with her Goddess Harp, which matches the original harp from Skyward Sword, however this one is clearly the Ocarina of Time version, given the blue cloth that is seen tied to one end. Moving on to Lana, an interesting thing to note right away is that each of her three weapons matches one of the goddesses of Hyrule, in which case her tomes match the goddess Nehru, which, like her magic does in Ocarina of Time, create barriers. However, the design for the tome itself is original. Next up, with the Faror themed weapon, we have the Deku Spear, which as everyone points out, it's not really a spear, it's a stick, and that's exactly what it's modeled on, the Deku Stick from Ocarina of Time. Finally, we have her Din themed weapons, the Summoning Gates, with the first one, the Gate of Time, coming from the Gate of Time scene in Skyward Sword. Also, the way that Lana dances throughout using different moves with this weapon connects to the dancer Din from Oracle of Seasons. Next we have Zelda's Rapiers, with the level 1 version, the Polished Rapier, being mostly original, however it does take a lot of design cues from the Rapier scene in the first Legend of Zelda title screen. Next up, her level 1 Wind Waker is the Wind Waker from Wind Waker's Wind Waker. And the old Dominion Rod is the exact same Dominion Rod seen in Twilight Princess. Ganondorf's level 1 Swords of Despair have a couple of different sources. One of the blades is the blade taken from the regular Darknut enemy in Twilight Princess, while the second blade comes from a Darknut mini-boss seen in that game's Temple of Time dungeon. Ganondorf's level 1 Thief's Trident comes from the trident that Ganon wields in A Link to the Past. However, this version has an added adornment that shows off the Gyarado colors. All of Darunia's hammers, including this level 1 magic hammer, have the same shape as the Ocarina of Time Megaton hammer, although this one is named for the A Link to the Past magic hammer, which it does not resemble whatsoever. Ruto's level 1 silver scale is the exact same silver scale first seen in Ocarina of Time. Agatha's Butterfly Parasol is only seen in specific moments in Twilight Princess when Agatha leaves her house and is standing outside of the castle town. Midna's Cursed Shackle is the exact same shackle that she wears on her hair in Twilight Princess. Zant's level 1 Usurper's Scimitars are also the exact same scimitars that he wields in Twilight Princess. The Goddess Sword that Fi is in this game comes directly from the base version of the sword with the same name seen in Skyward Sword. Girahim's level 1 Demon Tribe Sword is the exact sword that he wields against you in Skyward Sword. Sia's extremely painful looking Scepter of Time is a Hyrule Warriors original design. Next up we have Volga with his Dragon Bone Pike, with its blade part meant to directly reference one of the claws from Volvagia, the boss of the Fire Temple in Ocarina of Time. The blue ring here that Wizro wields could come from a variety of sources, as there are many games in the Zelda series which have rings as an item. However, the very first blue ring comes from the first game in the franchise, The Legend of Zelda for the NES. 
While Midna's mirror weapons are going to lead up to the Mirror of Twilight, this Mirror of Shadows is a original design. While all of Young Link's fierce deity masks are exact copies of the one seen in Majora's Mask, his sword does change from level to level. However, this first sword is also an exact match to the sword that fierce deity Link uses in that game. Tingle's level 1 Rosy Balloon takes its name from the game Freshly Picked Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land. However, its standard red design comes from the balloon that Tingle is first seen using to fly in Majora's Mask. Linkle's level 1 Simple Crossbows are another Hyrule Warriors original design. However, Linkle's level 1 Winged Boots have a variety of sources. First of all, the general shape of the boots and the metal parts at the bottom come directly from the Ocarina of Time Iron Boots. However, the feather at the top is the golden feather item from Wind Waker. Skull Kid's level 1 Fairy Ocarina is the exact same ocarina that the character Saria gives Link in Ocarina of Time. Toon Link's level 1 Hero Sword is the exact same sword and shield that Link starts out with in The Wind Waker. And the level 1 Sand Wand comes from the first time that item was found in a Zelda game, in this case being the Sand Rod from Spirit Tracks. Tetra's level 1 Pirate Cutlass is also paired along with an original pistol. However, the Cutlass part of this does come from the sword that she's seen wielding in Wind Waker. King Daphne's level 1 Windfall Sail is an exact copy of the standard sail seen in the Wind Waker. Medley's level 1 Sacred Harp is also an exact copy from the Wind Waker, in this case being the harp that Medley plays in that game. Marin's Sea Lily Bell is one of the eight instruments that Link has to collect from A Link's Awakening. However, the more detailed design of this weapon can only be seen in Link's Awakening official art. While both the regular Phantom enemies from Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks have the exact same sword that Toon Zelda is wielding here, only the Spirit Tracks version has the correct matching shield, making that what this pairing is referencing. Ravio's level 1 wooden hammer comes directly from the hammer that he rents or sells in A Link Between Worlds. However, this orangish mallet design originally started with the magic hammer from A Link to the Past. Finally, we have Yuga and his wooden frame, which is a pretty standard wooden frame that you might see on any portrait, but is still technically a Hyrule Warriors original. And so that does it for all of the level 1 weapons, plus the Master Sword. There's a lot of very simple connections in this set, but I thought I'd still cover them anyway, because a lot of people don't know the entire breadth of the Zelda series. There are a total of 42 level 2 weapons in Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. Compared to the level 1 collection, there are a lot more Hyrule Warriors original designs, however, there is still a good amount of interesting connections here. Let's jump right in and check them out. Link's level 2 White Sword is named for the White Sword that is found in the original NES Legend of Zelda. Next up, his level 2 Prism Rod is a Hyrule Warriors original design. The Great Forest Fairy is themed around the bees that are found throughout the series. However, I believe that this one is more specifically connected to the Good Bee from A Link to the Past, who will help you once you've caught and bottled him. His level 2 Golden Gauntlets are connected to the Golden Gauntlets from Ocarina of Time. However, the Ball Weapon is more connected to the Ball and Chain Soldiers that are seen throughout the series. But with this golden color, it could possibly connect it to General Onox from The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. However, the color on his weapon still doesn't quite match with it. Here we have Twilight Epona, which of course is the Epona seen in Twilight Princess. And last up for Link, we have his Enhanced Spinner, which is a Hyrule Warriors original. Next up, Impa's level 2 Bigoron's Knife is named for what would have been the weaker version of the Bigoron Sword seen in Ocarina of Time. However, her level 2 Scorching Naginata, like the other Naginatas, is an original design. Sheik's level 2 Typhoon Harp is also an original design. However, I can't help but think it might take some design ideas from the Song of Storms. Next up, Lana's level 2 Sealing Tome is an original design. Her level 2 Kokiri Spear is quite like an enhanced version of the Deku Stick seen last time, however it does have Kokiri's Emerald at the top of it. And finally we have her level 2 Guardian Gate, which shares a lot of similarities with Sia's level 2 Guardian Scepter, and you can see the design of this gate in many of the attacks that Sia performs where she summons in something. Zelda's level 2 Glittering Rapier is a Hyrule Warriors original design, and that also goes for her level 2 Sacred Baton, and her level 2 
High Dominion Rod. Ganondorf's level 2 Swords of Darkness takes a little bit of a design cue from the swords that he's seen wielding in his beast form at the end of Ocarina of Time. However, his level 2 King of Evil Trident is a much more direct reference to the Trident that Yuga Ganon wields after merging with Ganon in A Link Between Worlds. Darunia's level 2 Igneous Hammer is technically a Hyrule Warriors original design, however it takes a lot of design cues from the home of the Gorons, Death Mountain, basically having an entire erupting bust of Death Mountain at the top of it. Ruto's level 2 Golden Scale is an exact version of the Golden Scale item that's found in Ocarina of Time. Agatha's level 2 Luna Parasol is a Hyrule Warriors original design. However, as you can tell, this costume, which can be found later in the Wind Waker map, was built to match it. Midna's level 2 Twilight Shackle is technically another original design, however the pattern and the coloring on it perfectly matches a lot of the design cues from the Twilight Realm, specifically the portals and some of the clothes worn by Twilight Midna and Sant. Zant's level 2 Shadow Scimitars is a Hyrule Warriors original design. It might also come from X-Men. The level 2 Goddess Longsword that Fi is, is another perfect match to the upgraded Goddess Sword, the Goddess Longsword in Skyward Sword. Girahem's level 2 Demon Long Sword is a Hyrule Warriors original design. Sia's level 2 Guardian Scepter is an original design, however it does tie back to Lana's level 2 Guardian Gate. The orb on the end might be connected to this staff or whatever this is that she's seen using when she was a Guardian of Time. Volga's level 2 Stone Cleaver Claw is a Hyrule Warriors original design. I've seen people say that it's somehow connected to Volvagia's helmet, but I certainly can't see it. Next up, Wizro's level 2 Red Ring. Like his other rings has a lot of different connections, but the original Red Ring came from the first Legend of Zelda game. Twilight Midna's level 2 Mirror of Silence is another original design. However, the coloration and pattern on the back matches her robe and a lot of the Twilight colors. Young Link's level 2 Furious Deity's Mask is yet again the same mask as always, however the color and these crescents seen on the weapon make it a bit of a reference to the armor that Fierce Deity Link wears. Tingle's level 2 Love-Filled Balloon is named for the game Ripen Tingle's Balloon Trip of Love, however the rest of it is mostly original. Linkle's level 2 Hylian Crossbows comes from the crossbows that Link is seen wielding on Link's crossbow training for the Wii. Linkle's level 2 Rocks Boots obviously have the Rocks Feather, which first appeared in Link's Awakening. However, this version is definitely the Four Swords Adventure version of that feather. The rest of the design of these boots are taken from the Twilight Princess Iron Boots. Skull Kid's level 2 Lunar Ocarina is based off the moon's face from Majora's Mask. In this case, the coloring comes from the new artwork of the moon for the Majora's Mask remake. Next up with Toon Link, his level 2 Phantom Sword is actually a combination of the Phantom Sword from Phantom Hourglass and the Wooden Shield from that game. His jeweled sand wand is kind of an original design, with the body and the jewel in the middle coming from the A Link Between Worlds sand wand, but the horned tops look a lot like the upgraded beetle item from Skyward Sword. Tetra's level 2 jeweled cutlass is mostly an original design, however it adds the pirate charm stone from Wind Waker to it. King Daphne's level 2 swift sail is obviously the swift sail that was only available in the Wind Waker HD release for Wii U. Medley's level 2 earth god's harp is mostly an original design, however you can see the symbol that's on the doors you must play music for at the earth temple in Wind Waker. The color scheme of the rest of it reminds me a lot of the instrument that Makar plays in that game. Marin's level 2 wavelet bell is obviously inspired from the waves around Koholint Island, however if you look closely the handle actually has a seagull on top, which is a direct reference to the seagull that Marin becomes in the good ending for Link's Awakening. Toon Zelda's level 2 warp sword and her shield are both references to the warp phantom sword and shield from Spirit Tracks. Ravio's level 2 white bunny hammer is a big mix of different references. One, the hammer's shape and the bunny ears on top reference the items that you can rent from Ravio in A Link Between Worlds. Secondly, the color scheme of the hammer with the white, red, and blue is the only reference in this game to Shiro, the bird that assists Ravio and collects your items whenever you die in A Link Between Worlds. And finally, the red rims with the design inside look a lot like the hint glasses from that game. However, the spiral on this hammer is different from the repeating circles that are seen on the glasses. Finally, Yuga's level 2 frame of ceiling is the specific frame that he put around the sage Ceres in A Link Between Worlds. Well, that does it for the connections for all of the level 2 weapons in Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. 
Altogether, there are a total of 42 level 3 slash 4 weapons in Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition for Nintendo Switch. Because the level 3 and 4 versions of these weapons have the exact same design, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to refer to them as the level 3 weapons for most of the video. Unlike the level 2s, there are a lot of unique connections in the set, so let's go ahead and find out what they are. Link's level 3 Magical Sword is named for The Legend of Zelda on the NES Magical Sword. However, its design is more closely associated with the sword seen on the box art for The Adventure of Link, also known as Zelda 2. Next up, his Magical Rod with its blue colors takes its color scheme from the original Legend of Zelda Magical Rod. Here we have his Great Sky Fairy, which has a design taken directly from the red loft wing that Link rides in The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. His Power Gloves share a name and some design cues with the A Link to the Past Power Gloves. However, on the end, that's not a Chain Chomp, because Chain Chomps come from the Mario series. In the Zelda series, they're known as Bow Wows, seen a little bit in A Link to the Past and more prominently in Link's Awakening. Here we have the Epona of Time, which is, of course, the Ocarina of Time version of Epona. And last up for Link, we have his Triforce Spinner, which is a Hyrule Warriors original design. Impa's level 3 Bigoron Sword shares a name with the Bigoron Sword from Ocarina of Time. And although the handle is pretty spot on, the overall design is quite different. Her level 3 Shika Naginata is a Hyrule Warriors original design. However, the colors and the feathers on it are quite consistent with the Shika and Impa in other versions of herself. Sheik's level 3 Triforce Harp is technically an original design, however the overall design of it is built to match the Triforce crest seen a lot in the Hylian royal family imagery. Moving on to Lana, her level 3 Sorceress Tome is a Hyrule Warriors original design. Her level 3 Pharon Spear is yet another evolution of the Deku Stick, however this time it has a bust of the Deku Tree himself at the top. Finally, her level 3 Gate of Souls is a Hyrule Warriors original design, however it is seen in a cutscene of the story mode where she summons in her allies for help. Zelda's level 3 Gleaming Rapier is a Hyrule Warriors original design. This also goes for her level 3 Glorious Baton and her level 3 Royal Dominion Rod. Ganondorf's level 3 Swords of Demise are a kind of corrupted version of the sword that Demise wields at the end of Skyward Sword, and if you look closely, it even still has the inverted Triforce on his sword before it was really associated with low rule in later games. Similarly, his level 3 Trident of Demise is also designed around the shape of Demise's sword. It's basically here in its most pure form at the tip of his trident. Darunia's level 3 Megaton Hammer is a Hyrule Warriors original design, however its red color is most assuredly associated with Din's Ruby, which Darunia himself gives to the player in Ocarina of Time. Ruto's level 3 Water Dragon Scale comes from the item in Skyward Sword with the same name, however this Water Dragon Scale comes accompanied with Zora's Sapphire hanging from it. Agatha's level 3 Princess Parasol is another Hyrule Warriors original design, however like her level 2 version, a costume was also added to perfectly match it, in this case being the costume that you get on the Twilight Princess map. Midna's level 3 Soul Shackle is one of the souls seen in Twilight Princess, which are used by Link in the Twilight Realm. Zant's level 3 Scimitars of Twilight are actually a very particular reference, in this case being the sword that Zant has only seen using once in Twilight Princess, that he then uses to bring the Star Lord back to life for a boss fight. The level 3 True Goddess Blade that Fi is has a slightly different name in Skyward Sword, because it is directly designed after the Goddess White Sword version of the Goddess Sword. Next up, Girahim's True Demon Blade, looking really awesome, is a Hyrule Warriors original design. Sia's level 3 Scepter of Souls is an original design, however it has one of the Gate of Souls from Hyrule Warriors sitting at the top. Volga's level 3 Flesh Render Fang is an original design. Wizro's level 3 Magical Ring is yet again a reference to the many rings seen throughout the series, however the fact that it's green most likely connects it to the Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons green ring, which combines the benefits of the red and blue ring seen in his previous weapons. Twilight Minna's level 3 Mirror of Twilight is the exact same Mirror of Twilight from Twilight Princess. The Vengeful Deity's Mask uses the same Fierce Deity's Mask as the rest of them, with some slightly different particle effects. However, the sword on Fierce Deity's back is another original design. Tingle's level 3 Mr. Fairy Balloon is named for the nickname that he goes about calling the player in the games. However, if you look closely, the Tingle on the balloon, along with some of the ornamentation, is a pretty close mirror to the box art for Ripen Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land. Linkle's 
level 3 Legends crossbows have two bows of light from Twilight Princess on the tips. However, I believe the red and blue colors are a reference to the loft wings that Link and Zelda ride in Skyward Sword. Linkle's level 3 Pegasus boots seem to have their design come from a combination of the Link's Awakening Pegasus boots artwork and the A Link to the Past red Pegasus boots that you get in that game. Skull Kid's level 3 Majora's Ocarina is obviously a reference to the Majora's Mask from Majora's Mask. Next up with Toon Link, his Locomo Sword is actually a combination of both the Locomo Sword from Spirit Tracks and the Mirror Shield from Wind Waker. His level 3 Nice Sand Wand is pretty much exactly the A Link Between Worlds Sand Wand after it has been improved by the mother Mai Mai. Tetra's level 3 Regal Cutlass is mostly an original design, however the red color and the feather patterns most likely come from the wing design that is a symbol for the Hylian royal family. However, you can also see Toon Zelda's feather-like hair clips on the tops of her weapons too. King Daphne's level 3 Sail of Red Lions obviously has a miniature bust of the King of Red Lions boat form on the top, however the sail cloth is original. Medley's level 3 Din's Harp is based around the Din's Pearl item from Wind Waker, which is directly connected connected to the Rito tribe that she comes from. Marin's level 3 Awakening Bell is an original design, however it does look a lot like a later series design heart container. Toon Zelda's level 3 Wrecker Sword is the exact sword and shield of the Wrecker Phantoms from Spirit Tracks. Ravio's level 3 Nice Hammer is the hammer from A Link Between Worlds after it has been improved, with the added detail of the handle looking a lot like Princess Hilda's staff. Finally, Yuga's Demon King frame is a pretty devilish looking frame, however the vines on it come from phase 2 of the Yuga Ganon battle, where he grows these spiky thorns all over his arms and body. Well, that does it for every level 3 slash 4 weapon connection in the game. Within Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, there are a total of 42 level 4 plus weapons, and of those, 20 of them have additional 8-bit versions. To be clear, the 8-bit weapons which I'll be examining in this video can only be accessed in this game by first unlocking the level 4 plus weapon, and then turning on the 8-bit skin in the main menu. Unlike previous videos in this series, which looked at design inspirations for every level 1, 2, and 3 weapon in the game, this video is going to have to be be a bit different. All of the 8-bit weapons have the exact same origin. They are items or weapons that were found in the original Legend of Zelda for the NES. I'm still going to look at them here for comparison's sake during the first part of this video, but for the second part, I'm going to examine the level 4 plus weapons in a slightly different way. Anyways, I'll introduce that segment when its time has come. But for right now, let's take a quick dive through all of the 8-bit weapons. Here we can see Link's 8-bit wooden sword and shield, the 8-bit candle item, here's the 8-bit fairy, which also happens to be my favorite of all these 8-bit weapons, and you can even see NES Link in the bottle that she's holding. However, just to be clear, the act of bottling fairies wasn't added until A Link to the Past. The 8-bit power bracelet is a combination of both the bracelet item and the raft from Zelda 1, and for some reason, Impa gets the 8-bit boomerang for her giant blade. Impa's Naginata is replaced with the 8-bit magical sword, which has the third and best sword for Link at the end of it. Here we see Sheik's harp has been replaced with the 8-bit stepladder, which is rather cute as she can still kind of play it, and Lana's tome is of course replaced with the 8-bit book of magic. It's kind of hard to tell that this one's even 8-bit, it fits in so well. Lana's Deku spear has been replaced with the 8-bit magical rod, and her gate has been replaced by the classic compass, and man, this one looks pretty cool too. Zelda's rapier is replaced with the 8-bit white sword, which was the second sword that you get in the original Zelda, while her baton has been replaced with the 8-bit recorder. Ganondorf gets the 8-bit magical key in his left hand, however in his right hand he's just holding a normal key. Darunia's hammer is replaced with the 8-bit food item, which is kind of cute, but this is my least favorite of the items, as it doesn't grow like his hammer normally does during his big attacks in game. I suppose there's also a connection here in that you often need to give food to the Gorons in order to get them to do stuff for you. Ruto's scale is replaced with the 8-bit clock, which is rather fitting as it's one of the few items that any characters wear around their wrists, and Agatha's parasol is replaced with the 8-bit rupee. She's even given an adorable little 8-bit basket to go along with it. I really like this one. Midna is given the 8-bit red ring to replace her shackle, and Xant is given the 8-bit magical boomerangs, which to me 
Nami look like little blue bananas. What a coincidence. In her sword form, Phi takes the form of the 8-bit silver arrow, which is kind of fitting in that she is the master sword, and similarly to her status as that, the silver arrow is another item that can defeat Ganon. The last of these 8-bit weapons is the 8-bit arrow, which is given to Girahim, which kind of fits in that he's sort of the opposite of Phi, but there's not really much else to it. So that does it for all of the 8-bit weapon connections, if you can even call them that. I know this list was a little bit simple, but I'm going to try to make things a little bit more interesting later on. It's time for part 2, the level 4 plus weapons, and if you didn't know, all of the level 4 plus weapons are simply the level 3 slash 4 versions of the weapon with an added element. This new element gives the weapon a new color scheme, however, at the end of the day, it's still the same skin as the level 3 and 4 weapons, and I've already covered all of the Zelda series origins for those in the last video. So what is there left to cover, you might be asking? Well, seeing as this video is the culmination of me finally finishing finishing every costume and weapon connection in the game, I'm going to be having just a little bit of fun here at the end by combining the two series for this last main connection video. If you didn't know, some of the new palettes for the level 4 plus weapons have suspiciously perfect color combinations with many of the character costumes. Since the weapons and costumes all have their own independent references, there really isn't any deeper meaning to these pairings. They're just aesthetically pleasing. I'm going to be showing you some of my favorite combinations, and you can let me know if you think it works, or if there's some better pairing of costume and weapon that you like more. Sadly, the characters Medley, Marin, Toon Zelda, Ravio, and Yuga, who were DLC-only characters from the Legends version of this game, never got a single costume to pair with their shiny new level 4 plus weapons that are introduced in the Definitive Edition. Here they are on screen right now. Moment of silence. Alright, that's enough of that. My body and mind are ready for this. It's time to finish the costume and weapon connections with a Hyrule Warriors fashion show. Let's go! Link's level 4 plus weapon is the Dark Magic Sword, which adds the darkness element to his sword. To me, this best goes along with his boss costume colors. The pairings of the purple here is just too good, and it kind of fits in that this costume is a reference to Beast Ganon, so this is kind of a fitting sword for an evil version of Link. Next up, his Crackling Rod adds electricity to his Fire Rod. To me, there wasn't really a perfect pairing for this weapon. You could say that his yellow tunic fits it rather well, but to me, I rather like the look of just classic Link wielding this classic Link weapon. Something about this gallery just sort of messes up the colors for all of the great fairies, but here you can see in the ending scene that I think the colors that were added for Link in the Master Wind Waker map just fit her very striking red and greens very well. Link's burning gloves add fire to this weapon, and also give you very very bright red gloves and a bow wow along with it. This is another one without a really perfect pairing, so why not just put him in red and make this be his red day. Here we have Storm Stormy-Eyed Epona, which adds electricity onto it, and to me, the original colors from the Twilight Princess map just fit with this Epona so well. Last of all, we have his Hydro Spinner, which obviously adds water, and since I don't really think there's a perfect pairing, just put him in blue and say this is his Zora Day. Impa's Big Oron Sunblade adds light onto her regular weapon, and the yellows here just match very, very perfectly with her Twilight Princess colors, in my opinion. Something about the contrast between her clothes and the blade, while still kind of matching her hair makes this one look really good to me. Her crackling Naginata, which adds electricity, didn't really have a perfect pairing for me. To me, I thought the best match were her low roll colors, as the Naginata already looks a little bit brown to go along with her clothes. Sheik's Shining Harp probably has the least noticeable of the color changes. You're just going from gold to light gold. But anyway, for my money, I thought this looked really good with her colors from the Twilight Princess map. Lana's Tome of the Night, which adds darkness to her weapon, kind of looks really good with a lot of her costumes. While I originally thought that her Guardian clothings worked best with it, there's just something that's really striking when you pair it with her clothes from the Koholand Island map. Windfish Sorceress. Lana's Sun Pharon Spear, which adds light, changes the Deku Spear at the top to the this kind of goldish yellow, which also could fit a lot of her costumes, but to me the best one was her Deku Princess costume from the Wind Waker map. The yellow of the spear already mixes quite well with the green, but it also matches to the two big feathers in her hair at the top. Next, her Gate of Tides, which adds water to her gate weapon, can also sort of go with a lot of different costumes, but I personally prefer pairing it with her Master Wind Waker costume, which fits the watery theme of the Wind Waker game. Zelda's Gloomy Rapier adds darkness to her weapon, and like Link, this works really well with a darker version of herself, in this case being her Master Quest costume, which is modeled after the Princess Hilda. 
Zelda's liquid glorious baton adds the water element to this weapon, and to me it looks really great with her costume from the Twilight Princess map. The blues just kind of naturally go together. Last up for Zelda, we have her Volcanic Dominion Rod, which adds fire to her weapon. And I think this one naturally goes quite well with her boss colors, which are a reference to the fire-breathing dragon Argorak. Ganondorf's Swords of Renewal, which add light to his weapon, already look kind of cool when held in his golden gauntlets, but to me they look best in his Twilight Princess colors, which already have his fiery hair to match the fire-like yellows of these swords. Ganondorf's Burning Trident, which adds fire, is another one that doesn't really have a perfect pairing, but in my mind I think it looks rather good with his Master Quest costume. Darunia's Dark Fire Hammer, which adds darkness, just happens to look rather excellent when being wielded by the Master Quest costume for him, which is a connection to the Goron spirit Darmani from Majora's Mask. Ruto's Sun Dragon Scale adds a light to her weapon and thus gives it a bright yellow, so why not give it to this yellow Ruto from the Grand Travels map? Agatha's Incandescent Parasol was actually the inspiration for me to finish off these videos with a kind of fashion show, as every single weapon that Agatha has has some kind of match to one of her costumes. In this case, her costume from the Koholnet Island map matches the reds of this weapon so perfectly. Midna's Thunderhead Shackle adds electricity to her dark weapon, and as is, the color just kind of blends in with her hair. To counteract this, I like pairing it with her Makar costume from the Master Wind Waker pack, although unfortunately it still doesn't affect the color of her hair. Zant's Dark Water Scimitars add the water element to his weapon, and this is another one that doesn't quite have a perfect pairing for the colors, but in my mind the best match is his costume from the Wind Waker map. Fi's Liquid Goddess Blade can only really be seen when she's using certain attacks, but the best costume match to it when not in her sword form, to me, is this silvery costume from the Master Quest map. Girahim's Burning Demon Blade adds fire on top of his darkness element, and this one kind of already looks great with the original Girahim, but it might look even better with the blacks and reds of the Master Quest costume Girahim. Sia's Crackling Scepter, which adds electricity to her dark weapon, really looks like the kind of staff that Sia should be wielding from the beginning. And while I really like how it looks with her Guardian clothes, it's really striking when paired with her Koholnet Island costume, but to me it might work best when it's with her Low Rule Map costume, as the colors already look a little bit similar to the staff that Hilda wields. Volga's Dark Fire Fang adds darkness to his weapon, and while the color change is a little bit slight, you can definitely see the purple added in different parts of the weapon. For me, this pairs absolutely perfectly with the Master Wind Waker costume for him, as the purple seen on different parts of his body, like his shins, go really well with the purples of the weapon. Wizro's Dark Water Ring, which adds the water element to his weapon, changes not only the gem to blue, but the ring itself to a silvery white, which pairs just perfectly with his Twilight Princess map Poe costume. Twilight Minna's Dark Light Mirror, which adds light element, to me doesn't really have a perfect pairing, but the slight yellow highlights, especially in the back, do go quite well with her low rule costume. Young Link, like Fi, has his new weapon, the Inflamed Deity Mask, which adds fire, only seen when he's transformed in some way. He does have a match for its red color in the Koholnet Island map costume, although it just makes me a little bit sad that we never got new colors for the Fierce Deity Link himself. Tingle's Liquid Fairy Balloon, which turns his fire balloon to a water balloon, goes rather well with a lot of his costumes, but to me the best match is the Low Rule Tingle, as his backpack and pantaloons are already blue to match. Linkle's Luminous Crossbows, which add the light element, sort of squanders the red and blue colors of her Legends crossbows, but the yellows here can pair rather nicely with her costume from the Grand Travels map. Likewise, her level 4 plus boots, which add the light element, could also go well with her yellow costume, but to me, it's just a little bit too much yellow. I prefer to contrast it with the purples from her low rule Ravio costume. Skull Kid's Crackling Ocarina, which adds electricity to his weapon, turns it into a yellowish orange, which of course pairs quite perfectly with the banana slash pineapple Skull Kid from the Koholnet Island map. Toon Link's Locomo Sword of Oceans adds the water element to his weapon, and although the blues here aren't very noticeable, I do think that they go well with his Nico costume from the Master Wind Waker map. The purples for Toon Link's level 4 plus Sand Wan don't really have a good pairing with any of his costumes. For me, I just put it with his Wind Waker map costume, which just looks good with everything. 
Tetra's Cutlass of Light, which adds the light element of course, to me looks best when contrasted with the darker greens and black hair of the Grand Travels Map Tetra. Last up for these level 4 plus weapon and costume pairings, we have the Supercharged Sail for King Daphne's, which adds the lightning element. And much like Tetra, I prefer to contrast this with the colors of his low rule version. As I spin him around here, I do think it looks rather great on his back. And that does it for what I consider to be the best pairings of costumes and the 4 plus weapons in the game. Obviously, these are just my opinions, and I would love to hear about your own favorite battle fashion options. I hope you have a great time unlocking all of these costumes and weapons for yourself, everyone. Cheers. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, please like, comment below, and subscribe. Also, be sure to check out my second channel, Games Brain Plays, for group and solo Let's Play content. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Until next time, this has been Games Brain, and I hope you take care.